Next we'll go over loops. So first let's go over the for loop. The for loop allows us to run a block of code um, x number of times. So in this case, we run this block of code right here 10 times. And the way we read this is we see we have this for, and then we have this parentheses here, and we have an integer i, and we set this integer i to the value 0. Then we do this comparison. So we check, is i less than 10? And if this is true, then we run whatever is in the block of code. If it's not true, then we exit the for loop and we start outside of this curly brace. So for the first iteration of the loop, i is equal to 0. 0 is less than 10. So this statement here is true. So we run the statement. And then after we run the statement, we, we do this part. So we do i++. And remember, i++ means i is equal to i plus 1. i plus plus is the same as i is equal to i plus 1. And so now i is equal to 1. So after, so after we run this statement, we go back to the comparison. So 1 is less than 10. That's true. So we run this block again. And then after we run the block, then we do this i plus plus, i becomes 2, and we keep running this until i is equal to 10. So once i is equal to 10, the statement is false, and we exit the loop. There's another kind of loop in Java called a while loop. The while loop continues to run until this statement is false. And so let's walk through this. So while my int is less than 10, and let us set my int equal to 0 up here. So my int is equal to 0. 0 is less than 10. So that's true. Then we execute whatever's in the curly brace. So we execute this block, which is my int plus plus. And remember, my int plus plus means you add 1 to my int, and then you set my int to that value. So my int becomes 1. So now we check 1 is less than 10. So this is true. And we run this block again. And now my int is equal to 3, 4, 5, and so on until it's equal to 10. And then 10 is less than 10 will be false. So then we exit the loop. Okay, next we'll go over breaks and continues. So a break is a way to exit a loop. Um, either a for or a while loop, whenever you want. So once we hit this break statement, then we'll exit this while loop. So let's run through this code that we have here. So we set my int equal to zero, and we have a while loop. So while my int is less than 10, which is true, we do my int plus plus. So this will make my int equal to 1. And we check. Oh, we have an if statement here. And so remember, an if statement um, checks whatever is in this parentheses. If it's true, then it executes this statement. Otherwise, it just continues on. So we check. Um, is 1 my int, which is equal to 1, is it equal to 5? And in this case, it's no, so it doesn't run the statement, and it continues. Um, now my int is equal to 1, less than 10. That's true. So we run this. My int becomes 2. 
and then we check is 2 equal to 5? No. So then we go back to the top here and we keep comparing and once my int becomes 5, then we'll then this statement will be true. We go inside this curly brace, we execute this break, and then we leave. So at this point, my int has the value 5. Next, let's go over what a continue is. So continue, when the continue is reached, everything after the continue is not executed, and then it goes right back to the top of the loop. So let's go over this example. Um, before I do that, let me explain what this thing is. This is a way to print out to the console. So there may be a con or Java, you can make it so that a console appears here. And then whatever's in here will get printed out to the console. And so what this block of code does, it starts with my int equal to um, my int equal to set it equal to five. So it checks is five less than ten. This is true, so it goes into this block. So it does five plus plus. Um, so five, so my int becomes six. It checks if six is equal to seven. It's not true, so it doesn't execute this. And it goes to the it goes to the end of the curly braces, and then it goes to this statement, and then this prints out my int to the console. So it will print six. Then it checks. Is six less than ten? Six is less than ten, so it goes in here. It does an increment on the six, so it might become seven, and it checks. If seven is equal to seven, which is true, then it does this continue. And so it skips whatever comes here and it goes right back to the top. So is seven less than ten? This is true. So we go here. My becomes uh, from 7 to 8. It checks if 8 is equal to 7, which is not true. So it goes here and it prints out 8. And likewise, it'll keep printing out values until my int is equal to 10. 10 is not less than 10, so this is false, and then it exits. So these are all those statements that are printed out to the screen 6, 8, 9. And so because we have this continue here, we didn't run this statement for when my, my in was equal to 7. Next, I want to go over some basic object-oriented programming concepts. So the first thing is the public keyword. So the public keyword means that this variable here, name, is accessible outside of the class. So to create a player object, we can access this name variable in this manner outside of player class. So say we want to print out the name. So system So if you want to print out the player's name to the console, then we do something like this. So my player dot name. And this will print out Mario to the console. Now this private variable or this private keyword 
means that this variable calendar is not accessible outside of the class. So if we try to print out this, we'll get an error. And it basically, this error right here is basically saying the field player.counter is not visible. So this variable is not visible because it's private. So private variables can only be accessed within the class that it's declared in. So if we have a function, which we'll see later or a further below, we'll be able to use counter, just not outside of this class. Let's delete this. Next, um, I want to explain what the static keyword is. So static means that this variable object ID belongs to the class and it will be shared amongst all player objects. So if we have multiple players, and we were to change this object ID, Um, for my player, if we were to change this, then it'll get changed for both of these objects. So object ID for my player will be new player object, but my player one um, dot object ID will also be this. That's different from a variable like mar uh, like name where if we were to set my player dot name equal to Luigi, my player's name will be Luigi, but my player one will still be Mario. That's the difference between static and something not being static. Now let's briefly go over methods or functions. So we can specify here that this method increment ID is private. And this means that this function can only get called within this class. <clears throat> So today we want to create some kind of function here. So it's like a test function. And we'll be able to call increment ID here. However, we wouldn't be able to call it in this class here. So if we were to do something like my player dot increment ID, this would not work. Um, and this is because it's not uh, visible again because it's a private uh, private method. Um, now this void statement is the return value. So some functions can return a value and you'll specify what the data type for that return value is right here. So in this case, we don't return anything, so it's just void. And then this is the function name. And then this is where we specify um, any of the parameters to this function. And in this case, there are no parameters, so it's just uh, empty inside the parentheses. And then we wrap the method um, around curly braces. So the content of the method with curly braces. And in this case, the content is this counter plus plus, which increments counter by one. 
So that's this um, method right here. Now, if we look at this method down here, it's a little bit more complex. But this time it's a public function, and it's actually a public static function. And so public will allow it to be accessed outside of this class. Um, static means that it's a it, this function belongs to the class and not the object. So and then this is the return type, so it returns a string. And this is the name of the function. And this takes in as a parameter a string object ID. And so when we call static functions, we need to write out the, the name of the class. So this function or this method belongs to the player class. And then we do, uh, we write the name of the function, so change object ID. And then we write these parentheses here. And then it takes in an object ID, which is a string. So we can just write in new object ID. And we can end it with a, a semicolon. And then there's a return value here. So this value, so that once this function runs, it returns a value. Um, and in this case, that's object ID. So we return the object ID. So we can do uh, new object ID. Okay, so let's go back to this function here. So we get the object ID that's being passed in. We set it to this player.object ID. Um, and then we return the object ID that it was set to. And we see that return value right here. So it gets set right here. All right, so that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know we went over a lot of things in this one tutorial, and I might have been a bit too ambitious trying to go over all of Java in a single, a single tutorial. But this should be enough to get you started in Java, and it should be enough to take you through the next videos for the game development part of this tutorial series. Um, if you're still a little confused about certain parts, you'll get some more experience throughout this tutorial. Um, but you can also look for other resources to go over some of the concepts that might have been a bit confusing or they don't feel too strongly about. Um, but starting in the next tutorial, I'll start, or we'll start developing our video game. That should be really exciting. Um, and so I, I'm looking forward to that and I hope you guys are all looking forward to that as well. So with that, um, that's the end of this video and please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for all the updates. Alright, see you in the next video.